In this video, I wanted to do a quick overview of the new version of the TypeScript Node SDK for OpenAI's API. So it just came out, you're able to access it on GitHub and NPM install it now. And I'm just gonna be running through a handful of examples from the README, as well as some other examples, just to show you on how you can incorporate this into your project. So the first thing to note that I wanted to show you is you no longer have to specify your API key necessarily when you declare that new API client for interfacing with the OpenAI API. So before you'd have to specify API key, process.env, uh, OpenAI API key, etc. Now it will automatically look for that within your project. So if you've deployed it, it will look for that in the environment variables, or if you're running it locally with something like .env, it's going to look for that variable. So something that's sort of a nice to have and sort of cleans up the code. Now, the next one, which I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about is the ability to stream out responses, which I'll demonstrate here. So here is a simple example where it's streaming out the responses to the terminal, but you could imagine where this could be useful for having that similar feel to something like ChatGPT, where you're streaming out from your back end to your front end and being able to have that familiar ChatGPT-like feel. Now, another one that I think a lot of people are going to be excited about is the TypeScript support. So this is just a, a simple example of the TypeScript support and the parameters for a non-streaming example. So if I just change this here and I say completion and I go streaming, as soon as I change it, you start to see some of that type validation and errors that might come up if it doesn't match the parameters that are mapped to it. So another huge feature, I think, for a lot of TypeScript developers, I think this one is probably one of the more requested features, and needless to say, it's nice that it's finally included. So the next one I wanted to show you is the ability on, or the new feature or implementation on how to upload files. Now, while this might not be something that a lot of you are doing now, it might be something that you may consider in the near future. And the reason I say that is because they made an announcement early last month that GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 will be able to be fine tuned. And in the interim, they're recommending to not fine tune their older models right Right now because it's seemingly imminent where you'll be able to uh, use GPT 3.5 or 4 with your fine tuning. So this is just a handful of examples on ways you can upload your JSON-L file. So here is just a demonstration on uh, a way you can do it. There's a handful of different ways that you can do this, but JSON-L is simply there's your prompt and there's your uh, desired completion. So if you uh, uh, scale out this file and say you have a big uh, fine tuning file, that's how you can do it. You can simply upload it like you see here. And there's a handful of examples that they have in their docs and, and that I have here. So I'll include all this stuff within a simple uh, GitHub repo that you can just pull things down and run things in the terminal if you like. So next I wanted to show an example of Whisper. So this has simplified considerably in terms of how you can get a transcription from an audio file in their SDK now. So if I simply run node five Whisper, you can see that how quickly and with as very few lines of code, uh, you can get a transcription back of an audio file. So that one's pretty self-explanatory. Now, the last two I just wanted to touch on is there is now the ability to have a timeout. Now, you might be thinking, why do I need a timeout? So if you're working within something like a Lambda function where you don't want it to run over or just wait for it to error out, or maybe you want to set it within the limit of that function, like maybe you only have 60 seconds to work with, now you can set your timeout and you can have that error be called without it just timing out on you. So that's a nice feature to bake within or baked within the SDK. And then finally, there is uh, retries. So out of the box, I believe it's two retries that it does try. So if there's an issue like it hits the API and it gets a status uh, code that it's not happy with, it's going to try again. And now you can actually specify the retry attempts as well. So uh, I don't think I actually had uh, the retries here, but nonetheless, I'll just pull it up on screen here. So if I just show retries. 
So you can see, yes, the default's two. You can specify how many retries that you want if there is an issue. And you can, spe you can see that, you know, they might happen because of, you know, network con connectivity problems or the like. So there's a handful of things, uh, other things within here that you can check out, uh, such as setting up a proxy if that's something that you're interested in. And there's also support for these following environments here. So I just thought I'd give you a quick overview on some of the features and some of the new syntax and nice to haves within the SDK. But as always, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.